Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for June 17th, 2019. So, hey everyone, it's good to be back in the saddle here after being gone on Friday. I apologize for that. Let's take a look at what's going on in the markets today. First off, futures are poking up just a little bit, trying to put on a brave face this morning, wanting to go higher. But the fact of the matter is the entire world is kind of waiting on the Wednesday FOMC meeting announcement. So we'll want to consider that very carefully as we head into this week. Keep that in mind because we're going to see some very interesting, probably see some very light and choppy price action as we wait for that FOMC. Maybe a little consolidation and that could be a real good thing for the market as we just kind of rest after such a substantial rally in the market on hopes of an interest rate increase. So we'll talk about that here in just a second on the interest rate increase, but let's take a look at the technicals of the chart. If you take a look here, we are still technically in a downtrend on the diamonds. And we have some resistance levels above that could certainly be tested right in through here. We could get some tests of those areas. But one thing we are doing that's really important here is we're holding above our 50-day moving average, which is about right in here. So right through this area, we have this little range that we're working into. And these spinning top dojis right here would kind of suggest a little more rest might be in order anyway. A little bit more consolidation. Uh, buyers and sellers seem to be relatively comfortable currently with the prices. So we'll have to wait and see. And I think that's probably the attitude of the market here ahead of the FOMC. Wait and see what the FOMC is going to do. And not only that, what are they going to forecast? So first off, odds of a June um, rate decrease um, seem to have dropped significantly. There was a lot of speculation in the beginning that there was going to be a rush by the FOMC to uh, change rates, but I really don't think that's going to happen. Um, the uh, the odds of a J July increase or decrease seem to have um, uh, slightly risen here in the last few days, and largely because of strong economic da data continues to suggest that, hey, our economy is doing good, so why are we cutting rates? So um, I think um, also the FOMC is going to want to wait. They're going to want to wait until the G20, because right now there is, you know, just that tiny little bit of hope out there that uh, these two leaders will come together and hammer out a deal and we can move on from the U.S.-China trade war. And certainly, um, if that were to occur, it would really toss into question uh, whether or not the FOMC would need to cut rates at all. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here, but I would, I would kind of expect them not to do anything to, um, on Wednesday. But what's going to be important, probably more important than their rate decision, uh, is going to be their FOMC forecast. Are they going to discuss the possibility of one, two, or even three rate cuts this year? And that would be pretty interesting uh, to the market, whether or not the market will respond in a bullish or bearish way. Um, after that announcement. So we're going to have to wait and be careful um, for that decision because, uh, you know, uh, anything is possible around uh, a Fed decision and how the market interprets that um, is really up in the air. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY doing the same thing here, kind of hanging out just below some price resistance zones right in here. Right through this area, we have that price resistance in the chart, and we're trying to hang out right in this area. But also notice that we're hanging out right above the 50-day moving average as well. So we're trying to lock in this range here and, and stay right above this area. Now, that's a good sign for the market. Now, if we were to 
um, get some kind of good news or whatever the bulls come in there and we pop out of here, I would think an all-time high of the market test is very, very likely. If we happen to get a fail in here and break back down below that 50-day moving average, um, then this lower high in the market would certainly be a concern and something we would have to um, base some decisions on um, yeah, you know, technically in that price action. Let's take a look at um, the cues. And here's one of the complications that we have. We have the diamonds and the spiders doing very well, holding up above their 50-day moving averages. We have the NASDAQ here that challenged a price resistance up here, but as at least at this point has been unable to break up through this level. There's a little bit of range right here, but we're trying to push up into that level and has not been able to hold on to that. And as of Friday, here we are, you know, just right down here below that 50 day moving average. So we have this resistance range up here and we also have that 50 day moving average showing price resistance here. And certainly that pop through and then failure to hold that 50 day moving average is a concern for the market. So Diamond Spy holding above cues uh, now below. Now we are going to get just a little teeny tiny move up this morning, but um, nothing that looks like it's going to breach that 50 day moving average, at least right now. That could change with the economic data coming out this morning, but we'll have to wait and see. And then IWM, IWM still very, very sick, um, selling off a little bit here on Friday just not looking very healthy and really not look, wanting to participate this morning in the overall market move up. We're actually getting a little bit of a gap down showing here on IWM this morning. So let's take a look um, here on our moving averages and you can see we are not only below our 50 day moving average, but we're below that 200 day moving average. There's a significant level of resistance right through this area. That's going to be really challenging the IWM and perhaps the IWM is, is giving us some of those leading signals. If uh, this were to fail, uh, could be pretty bearish for the market. So kind of watch that closely. So two indexes leading us up, two indexes showing really some significant concern. So it's almost if the overall market is hedging its bet as well. It's just not sure where we're going to go here uh, directionally in the market. Let's take a look at the VIX. That VIX made a move down on Friday, showing a little bit of decrease in fear. And it was nice to really see that um, the VIX finally moved. We've just been so stagnant here in the VIX. So dropping a little fear out of the market, that helps us a little bit in that possibility that we could see some more highs coming in the market. Let's watch that close though. Let's take a look at T21. Oops, got to type it right. T2122, which is the four week new high, new low ratio. And you can see where the new, where this ratio stands is just kind of right in the middle. We don't have, um, uh, really good indications either way here in T2122. So what it's showing us is we have plenty of upside room, we have plenty of downside room, and really kind of that big unknown. Which way do we go from here? And isn't I think that's what we've been talking about all morning is where do we go from here as we wait for that FOMC? What happens here? And I think there's a really, really good chance, guys, that we see a very light and choppy market up until that FOMC announcement, um, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And, you know, just the market's going to be pensive. It's, it's trying to figure out um, what all this information means. Where are we going to go from here? And um, as, as we're waiting on that information, the market is uh, not surprisingly, uh, would not surprisingly be um, light and choppy, just waiting for more clarity here in the market and we're in a good position for a little bit of consolidation on the diamonds and spy anyway so a little bit of rest 
um, would not be um, harmful for the market either. But it might be a little bit boring uh, for the next uh, few days as we wait for that FOMC. So let's take a look at our economic calendar today. We do have a couple things that could move us around, but these aren't expected to be really big market movers. We have that Empire State Manufacturing Survey coming out at 8.30 just for the before the market opens and then of course the housing market index coming out at 10 a.m there is a treasury capital uh, report at 4 p.m i wouldn't expect that to move the market at all today so we we'll want to keep an eye on these but it's unlikely that we see big huge movements as a result of that keep in mind that we do have some big numbers tomorrow that could move the market around Housing starts certainly are going to be in focus uh, tomorrow. And then that FOMC, obviously, is going to be a big deal. And that'll be the, the, the big, de the big um, report of the week, most likely. Let's take a, um, a quick look at our economic calendar. And our economic calendar really light today with only 11 companies reporting. I went through those companies and every single one of those uh, would be a, a penny stock type company. Really nothing here that is likely to move the market on that or earnings calendar today. So keep that in mind. Uh, so we have kind of a light economic calendar, a light earnings calendar. We have, um, um, a wait and see attitude most likely in the market we can expect just that light choppy kind of a dull trading day i think we'll have to wait and see of course anything is possible you know um, news report uh, presidential tweet storm or something like that could certainly um, kick the markets in a direction pretty hard and fast but um, barring that um, i wouldn't be too surprised to see that um just kind of a pensive market we're waiting let's take a look at um, well first off before I do that I just want to say thank you to everyone who watches these videos and and to those folks who um, are so so kind to continue to click those thumbs up buttons and leave comments you guys are awesome I truly truly appreciate it, it humbles me every day when I see your kind comments on these videos I'm glad you find them helpful I truly appreciate that and um, if there is anything that you guys would like to see me do in these videos, please let me know. I'm happy to uh, happy to try and make some modifications um, if that would be helpful to more people. Also, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button on YouTube. Click the follow me button on Facebook if you happen to be watching the video there. Click those thumbs up buttons and leave those comments. All of those thumbs up and comments help these videos be shown to more people and we continue to grow that audience of folks uh, preparing for their market day. And that's what this video is for. These videos are for is not to predict what's going to happen, but to really look at the overall market conditions. What can we see in the market? What things are affecting the market and how we might want to approach that market for the day so that we're doing it with a good business thought in mind, not an emotional chase or rush into the market day. So with that, everyone, thank you very much. And please feel free to share these videos with anyone, friends and family. They're open to everyone. Thank you, guys. So how about we take a look at a few charts that could be setting up for potential trades and things that have been looking just pretty darn good. Take a look at Roku here. And even though Roku pulled back a little bit on Friday, Roku's still a nice looking chart here, holding up in its trend very, very well. We need to see a little bit of bullishness come in here, but I think as long as this holds above this level of support, consolidating, um, I think we're in pretty good shape. Now, you can see I have a trend line on here. Now, this trend line is more of a guess than anything else. This trend line could actually, we could wait until this consolidates all the way over to the main trend. But I was just kind of doing a little bit of speculating, I guess, that we may try to move on up from here. And that's really because of that bullish candle right there. So kind of keep that in mind. Roku may have a little bit more time to wait, but certainly setting up and looking pretty good overall as a chart. Hey, take a look at that Disney. I've been talking about Disney for some time now. Disney looking pretty good as it's popped up here 
um, looking strong. Now, Disney's looking for maybe just a little pullback here this morning, a little bit of rest, and I think that's perfectly acceptable. A little bit of rest, a little bit of pullback after that big move. We want to watch this for the next entry into the trade, and right now, here's our trend. So a little bit of rest, a little bit of consolidation, a little bit of pullback, and then maybe a push to break through that high is uh, what may be coming in the future. We just have to watch and wait for that and um, could be another entry into that trade. Take a look at MGM. MGM challenging its downtrend here, just banging its head against this downtrend here. Now this could go either direction. Obviously when we fail, if we get a failure pattern here at price resistance, that could certainly lead MGM back down and really to a new low. Um, that's what we do, right? We fail at resistance, we move down, we rally back to resistance and we fail and we move down. We rally back to resistance and we fail and we move down. So how do we change that pattern? Well, we change that pattern by breaking through this price resistance up here, proving we can hold it as support, and then showing the possibility of that uptrend. So let's keep an eye on MGM. MGM may be one of those that could be setting up, holding up pretty well one we want to continue to watch. How about ConAgra? ConAgra also has that lower high thing possibility going on here and we have this bigger overall downtrend that we have to contend with. But notice right here, once again, we're trying to decide are we going to break through here or are we going to break down? And that's one to watch carefully um, here in the chart. ConAgra um, if it can pop on through, hold that support, that downtrend support, there could be some great upside potential coming here in ConAgra and really just following on this trend. So watch that carefully. Might be one to pay attention to. How about HIIQ? Now, I've mentioned this a few times, and I can't be you know, sure that this is actually even going to go. Obviously, I never know if a stock is going to go. But... Um, we have this price support here and this really nice bottoming pattern that's been built in here. And breaking through the neckline of this uh, kind of a head and shoulders, uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern, if we can hold this price support in here, I'd want to watch this over the next few days to see if this can pop and go. And if you guys uh, know, my alerts are always, uh, I mark on my chart pink so everyone can see them very clearly. You can see if we were to pop up here, all we're doing is just holding that trend. So pop above here, maybe up here to test this longer term downtrend. And HIIQ might be worth keeping an eye on. I love pullbacks to the trend like that and um, watching for those uh, good signals to occur. We have to wait for them, but watch for that signal to occur on those trades. And then back to the defensive stocks. Those defensive stocks just continue to perform very, very well. Defensive sector, I should say, stocks. PepsiCo, I don't know how much how much prettier trend that you can expect for. And we're just watching uh, PepsiCo maybe move up and kind of slide over here toward the trend. We want to watch for a new entry into that trade. So keep an eye on PepsiCo. Looking just pretty darn good there overall in the chart. So everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great profits. You know, guys, I understand trading is not the easiest way to, uh, it's not an easy business. Let's just say that. It's not an easy business. But it is one well worth working on and moving towards. So if your goal is to um, ever be a full-time trader, I want to encourage you to never give up on uh on your trading you know it's challenging it's difficult um it's never um it's never just a an easy thing to make money and, and you know if it if it were that way everyone would be doing it and then there'd be no money in it um, the fact that it is challenging the fact that it is difficult means that there is great opportunity here for those willing to stick it out and fight through it. If you need some help, if you need some mentoring, if you need some of those things, I, I highly encourage you find find that trading partner, find that that mentor that can really help you and be accountable to your business. Really focus in and remember this is a business. This is not a hobby. This is not, you know, just something to do for fun. This is not a casino. This is a business. And if we focus in on it as a business, 
we can really turn it around. And believe me, if an old carpenter like myself can figure this out and make a living doing this, anyone can. Everyone take care. I want to wish you all a fantastic day. We'll talk to you all bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a great day. Thank you.